treatment of fungal, fungal septic uh, complications and diseases in adults and children. Well, I got calls asking whether we could use ozone in children. Well, this is the hugest experience that he has, that he had in the terms of uh, implementing ozone therapy in children. Well, I would like to talk about these biofilms. As of now, it is obvious that a free flotation in liquid um, environment is not the only um, form of existing such bacteria. One of the most um, spread form is biofilm. Biofilm is structured, high ordered, sequenced bacterial community in polymer matrix and attached to uh, alive or implanted surfaces. So these biofilms have system of intercommunications and inter um, cooperation with the external environment. It doesn't show the slide, please. Could you please uh, get back to the previous slide? So it is shown, the, the biofilm is shown here. As you can see, the colonies of the bacteria are placed over there. Uh, enter microbe matrix, the, uh, so to say the cover, if you will. So, and the transportation canals that transport liquid and they, ch they exchange information between the bacteria and so microbes. My biofilm is shown here, the, um, the yellow cover, the yellow, yellow teeth tantanin. Different biofilms differ in composition of microorganisms, include one to several microorganisms, types of bacteria, and sometimes fungs. What can be in this biofilms? And some of them have spe specialized duties that com combined with others, they increase vitability of the whole consortium. As of now, biofilms is one of the pathogenic factors to creating chronic infections processes. Well, in this case, the bacteria, the streptococcus, and the formation of biofilm on, onto the teeth surfaces. Please, could you? Now, the idea is uh, generally recognize that the biofilm community's uh, development is one of the main strategies of survival of microorganisms not only in the environment but also in the body of humans and animals so one of the main problems here is the treatment of infections associated uh, with biofilms which uh, presents a lot of uh, difficulties which we see a lot in our intensive care units has to do with the fact uh, that in the biofilm contact of bacteria bacteria develop new contexts as compared to planktonic forms of microorganisms so first it has to deal with the ability of biofilm bacteria uh, to protect themselves against stress including uh, resistance uh, to disinfectants and uh, humoral and cellular factors of uh, human body. Please uh, see how these uh, biofilms form. It includes five stages. Uh, the first stage is uh, we can see the first uh, adhesion of microorganisms uh, to the to a surface, any surface. It can be a, a tissue, catheters that uh, you are used in veins, in the urethra, and uh, in uh, intubation tubes, uh, anywhere that they can be attached. It's adhesion, which is a reversible stage. The second stage is not reversible, and it's called final adhesion, which is also known as fixation. At this stage, microbes uh, uh, produce non-cellular polymers, which provide for tough adhesion, uh, firm adhesion. They um, 
uh, produce uh, substances uh, that make it so. The third stage is called uh, uh, maturing. In English literature, it's called the maturing one cells that are attached to the surface and so make it uh, simpler for other cells to be attached and the uh, extracellular matrix uh, to keeps together the whole colony, nutrients accumulate and uh, the cells start uh, dividing under this uh, biofilm. The second, uh, the fourth stage is called growth, or in English literature it's called maturing part two. So a mature biofilm is formed, which changes its size and form in the, in the extracellular matrix, and it uh, serves as protection for cells against external threats. Uh, in the upper uh, bottom of the corner you can see uh, the stages uh, but we do not recognize this fourth stage in Russia we interpret it as uh, uh, maturing we do not uh, divide it into two stages the fifth uh, stage five is about dispersion or injection of bacteria uh, um, so uh, during the division uh, new uh, by uh, separate cells uh, are detached, which can form new colonies, new biofilms. So the source of formation of biofilms is separate planktonic, uh, freely floating cells of bacteria, which can be attached to any surfaces, like I said. Necrosis, catheters uh, that are used in our intensive care units, uh, usually we install three catheters and intubation tube. And this is where it's uh, formed. Please uh, pay attention to the process of development of the stages, and how the biofilm is formed. For the first stage, we can see the initial attachment of uh, the microbial film to the surface of the software that happens through the different uh, forces like hydrophobic, electrostatic, and van der Waals uh, forces, which is called the primary adhesion, and the last one is usually reversible. I'm telling you about this uh, so that you can know how a zone can affect the stages of development of biofilm. In the implementation of the second stage, uh, we see the involvement of specific adhe adhesins, adhesive agents produced by bacteria, so they start producing their own products, uh, and these uh, adhesion agents are localized on uh, basically there, and we can see this irreversible adhesion. After specific adhesion, or we can s of interior cells, we can see proliferation and the production of chemical signals by them that starts a genetic mechanism of synthesis of intercellular matrix exopolysaccharide. So they start uh, forming this blanket basically with which they cover themselves to protect against antibiotics and the formation of this uh, glycocalyx and the formation of this uh, three-dimensional structure so it can be as thick as a few hundreds of micrometers is uh, seen as the biofilm maturation process and the number of bacterial cells accounts for about 15 percent out of the whole mass of the biofilm and the rest uh, accounts uh, for the matrix material which is polysaccharide I'm showing you this um, matrix uh, to show you how uh, these uh, biofilms are formed, uh, what uh, polysaccharides form them. The matrix is different in terms of in terms of the chemical and physical context in different biofilms. Usually it's uh, represented by gohomo and heterosaccharides, glucoses, galactoses, celluloses, uh, uh, rhamnoses, uh, and I'm showing the structure of polysaccharides because I want you to see whether it can be impacted upon by a zone. Uh, together with polysaccharides, so we can see proteins and nucleate uh, uh, lectins and minerals uh, that are required for the formation of a full biofilm there. Look, this chains of polysaccharides this um, polysaccharides are sewn together between together in the biofilms by covalent and uh, hydrogen connections um, marked by red and gray so an exopolymer matrix is formed which is also known as glycocalyx 
which is the main structural component of the biofilm. This blanket, as I call it, and this uh, layer of glycocalyx is uh, basically the uh, mechanical uh, barrier for cellular bactericid factors, phagocytosis, and for humoral ones also, like antibodies and uh, complement system proteins. The reasons of almost uh, full insensitivity of bacteria to antibacterial uh, drugs, usually it's, uh, it's a limitation in their diffusion uh, into the deep uh, government of the biofilm. And the antibiotics cannot get there, and these bacteria which live inside the biofilm are 1,000 times more resistant than the microorganisms that grow in a planktonic way. It is believed that the high resistance of bacteria in the biofilm can be also can also happen by the inactivation of antibiotics by matrix ferments that produce these bacteria. It's a unique thing. And uh, we have this interesting physiological aspect in this uh, biofilm. It would appear uh, this bacteria and fungi that exist uh, within these biofilms communicate between them. And it's called uh, the quorum sensing phenomenon, or the phenomenon of cooperative uh, sensitivity. It's a form of intercellular communication of more microorganisms that determines uh, the perception of changes in the environment and uh, their response to these changes. Its essence lies in the modification the modification of physiological function of bacteria when their sensitivity is changed and it leads to the production of outer extracellular signal molecule, outer inductors. So they exchange information through these outer inductors and they detect and form a response of, uh, in the form of a population reaction of a new form and it uh, takes down uh, the guard of patients even when they have a good immunity uh, but mm, under the influence of a b uh, bacterial load even when patients have a good immune system it's hard for them to handle this bacterial load and the process of formation of biofilms and synthesis of all exotoxins is also under the control of the system the intercellular uh, exchange of information in the biofilm happens through special chemical signal molecules and uh, because of them the microbe community acts as a whole body. Gram positive and gram uh, negative microorganisms have dif some differences in uh, their communication mechanisms between each other. Uh, in terms of bacterial cells. The gram-negative bacteria have, uh, have been seen to be identified to have quorum-dependent signals uh, where the signal molecules are acyl glomacerine glottones. In gram-positive bacteria, they usually use oligopeptide signal molecules for communication. Next. Uh, we have basically now started uh, the formation of these biofilms, how they uh, reside within biofilms, how they communicate between each other. They use different signals and molecules for that. Go back to that slide. How do we fight it? Of course, these days, our people engaged uh, in biofilm infections are working on the development of uh, different uh, substances to that end. And uh, the first one is anti-adhesion drugs. So how do we prevent this adhesion, uh, the attachment of this bacteria uh, to necrosis, uh, to catheters or cardiac valves or vascular prosthesis? It needs to be prevented. Please go back to the uh, previous slide. It's uh, about de the development of pharmacological uh, drugs that suppress or inhibit these signal molecules that the bacteria use to communicate between each other and through them microbe colonies act as a soul organism. So these drugs should disorganize the microbe communities 
in the biofilm. So we have to act against these molecules that they use to communicate between each other. The third area here is the development of substances which just track the matrix of biofilms, because if the biofilm's matrix is destroyed, they will be able to be acted upon by antibiotics, which improves the access of uh, drugs there. So we need to create opportunities for bacteria's eradication by this action, this targeted action. Okay, let's see whether a zone can have this anti-adhesive action. Look, primary adhesion of bacteria to living in the implanted chemical um, surfaces uh, uh, has to do with uh, uh, electrostatic hydrophobic venter valves processes, which are physical and chemical processes. Ozone is a bipolar molecule, and it uh, acts upon the aforementioned physical and chemical processes. And it leads, uh, it results in these uh, interactions uh, um, causing uh, like a uh, repelling force uh, for uh, charged uh, surfaces and the primary contact uh, of bacteria with the surface is uh, lost. So it's uh, anti-adhesive in this way. Then we're talking about uh, the interaction of zone with signal molecules of the microbial colony. Uh, Gram-negative uh, bacteria with a signal molecule use acyl gomoserine lactones for interaction between microorganisms and this reaction is shown in the slide the interaction of uh, ozone with acyl gomoserine lactones leads to their oxidation so this cycle of lactone is uh, disrupted and carbon uh, acid is uh, formed and the level of signal molecules in the microbe community goes down which leads uh, to disruptions in the exchange of information between microorganisms in the biofilm. The phenomenon of cooperative uh, cooper, uh, interaction uh, sensitivity sorry, is uh, lost and the microbe community no longer acts as a s one and the same mechanism, as a whole mechanism. Gram positive mechanisms uh, communicate uh, in the biofilm using oligopeptide signal molecules. When uh, uh, ozone interacts with oligopeptides, uh, uh, the latter oxidize to amino acids and the level of signal molecules in the micro microbe community falls down, drops, so which uh, leads uh, to disruptions in the exchange of information between microorganisms in the biofilms. So the quorum sensing phenomenon is uh, disrupted, quorum sensing. The microbe community no longer acts as one and the same mechanism and uh, using ozone to distract the quorum sensing in gram-positive and negative bacteria leads to the following. It leads to a decrease in the activity of processes of adhesion uh, for plankton form of microorganisms. It leads uh, to the expression of factors of uh, violence of bacteria which are part of the biofilm and of processes of biofilm formation and uh, exotoxin synthesis. This is what uh, happens uh, when a zone is used. Yeah. Also, uh, we need, I need to show you that uh, a zone can also affect uh, the biofilm itself. Uh, we said that the biofilm is composed of polysaccharides, and these chains in the biofilms are sewn together by hydrogen connections, which are marked by gray ozone, being a bipolar molecule, as we have said acts uh, upon uh, the intercellular hydrogen connections and it leads uh, to changes in the spatial configuration of polysaccharides. The disorganization of matrix structure of um, the biofilm allows access for bacteria antibiotics, uh, bacteria of antibiotics, uh, phagocytes, and it leads to the eradication of the microbe population. The polysaccharide chains are also sewn together by covalent uh, connections, um, causing a hydrolysis of uh, 
causing hydrolysis of uh, ether glycolysis then covalent connections. Uh, the matrix of the biofilm is uh, destroyed and oligosaccharides and monosaccharides are formed. And this the disorganization of matrix structure allows access uh, for antibiotics uh, to, uh, and for phagocytes, which allows it to eradicate the microbial population. Antibacterial action of ozone. Uh, multiple research has uh, pointed to the high antimicrobial uh, activity of ozone. So antibacterial and detoxifying action of ozone is also seen in the fifth stage of biofilm formation when separate bacteria are ejected and new colonies are formed. When ozone uh, uh, interacts with the cytoplasmatic membranes of microorganisms, ozonolysis products are formed and uh, they are an additional instrument for damage of uh, intercellular microbe structures which uh, allow for fermentation processes. Next slide. Speaking of uh, antibacterial ozone action, Ozonotherapy decreases uh, the resistance of pathogenic bacteria to bactericide factors of the internal uh, environment of the organism, like uh, the complement system. Important to note the oxidation of endo and exotoxins by ozone, which can decrease uh, the level of intoxemia, uh, endotoxemy, which uh, forms uh, in a septic and purulent diseases. Here I would like to show you how ozonotherapy is used uh, to treating in cardiovascular diseases of so this infection uh, affected by infection endocarditis. Uh, it's formed on valves uh, that are being prosthesized, that are being implanted. And in order to confirm the uh, action of ozone against a bio film infections. Here we can show you different types of applications of ozone therapies in uh, patients affected with this disease. So they have uh, seen, uh, been given an ozonified artificial blood circulation like a perfusat or by ozone uh, oxified gas mixture. Also the introduction of ozonified cardioplegical mixture in the corner uh, amount of the uh, heart with a concentration of ozone 0.35 mg per liter. Also, uh, the uh, cavities of the heart uh, have been uh, processed uh, uh, with ozonified physiological solution with a concentration of ozone 5 mil mg per liter. Intravenous infusions of ozonified physiological solutions of 20 ml per day with a content of ozone of 2 mg per liter for 10 days in post-op and uh, ozone uh, oxygen mixtures have been used uh, to sanitate uh, wards, uh, cardiosurgical wards with a concentration of ozone say, 6 to 8 mg per liter uh, two times per day and it uh, decreases uh, the uh, contamination of air by six times and uh, using these uh, methods in uh, uh, patients uh, suffering from infection endocarditis has increased the bedtime by two times it has decreased uh, the development of uh, pneumonia and acute uh, um, renal uh, deficiency by three times uh, and uh, 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 sorry, uh, uh, acute uh, liver insufficiency by three times, uh, acute uh, renal insufficiency and osteomyelitic uh, uh, processes and of ribs by two times, and uh, uh, heart uh, uh, insufficiency by two times. Uh, so uh, I'd like to tell you that for the prevention and treatment of biofilm bacterial infections, it's a right to use different technologies of ozonotherapies because ozone and ozonides that are formed in the body of the patient when it uh, interacts uh, with the bio environments can uh, lead to anti-adhesive actions. So, um, they destroy the primary contact of bacteria with the surface. It destroys the signal molecules uh, that interact between organisms uh, in biofilms. So the microbial community no longer acts as a one and the same organism and can also act against the components of the biofilm matrix and their intramolecular connections and it changes uh, the spatial configuration of polysaccharides. 
and there's a disorganization caused by ozone in the matrix uh, structure of biofilm allows access for bacteria, antibiotics, phagocytes, ozone and ozonides and it leads to the eradication of the micro population. Next slide. Thank you. Since uh, our guests will be visiting Boldeno, uh, where I was actually born, I was born near it, the Pushkin Boldeno. Since you will be going there, I needed to tell you that it's a symbol of creative uh, zenith and pinnacle for each and every one of you. You need to feel the inspiration given by the autumn and summer. Thank you very much, which is something you will see there. Thank you very much for your report.